They thought it was the perfect crime until the body was found. You're listening to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. The trial against Richard Allen, it will be coming up very soon. But before then, there is some question about Dr. Monica Walla, a therapist who became a central figure in the uh, legal proceedings of the Delphi murders involving Richard Allen. Walla treated Allen while he was held at the Wabash Correctional Facility, where he had been detained since his arrest in connection with the murders of Libby Gerben and uh, Abby Williams. The controversy on this, uh, it stems from allegations made by Allen's defense team regarding her professional conduct uh, on this case. According to the defense, Walla exhibited a strong personal interest in the Delphi case, which they argue compromised her ability to provide objective care to Allen. The interest was highlighted during pretrial hearings when Walla admitted under oath that she was fascinated by the Delphi murder case even before Allen's arrest. Joining me, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. Um, is this a big concern? I mean, it, to be interested in a case, but you're there on a professional level, does that uh, create some sort of uh, issue for, uh, for the defense and what sort of testimony that she may give? Well, I, th I think they're trying everything as they should, mm -hmm. you know, um, defend him vigorously, look at every possible angle here, what what has been improper, if anything, with mm -hmm. this. Um, you know, therapists are human, too. And when there's been a bizarre crime, it makes sense that a person would become very interested in it and maybe do some research on it. I think the the line for me is with her posting on social media. I understand that she was posting things on Facebook about it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of a breach of proper behavior. Yeah. So, you know, bottom line is, did this interest that she had impact her work with him mm -hmm. in any way? And you have to go over the records for that. You know, what exactly did she identify as the problem? What were her interventions? And did she act appropriately in her, in her professional role with him? She uh, also... Uh admitted uh, that uh, while she was in a official capacity, uh, looked on computers uh, about another uh, individual that uh, has never been a suspect, but a person of interest, Keegan Klein, a name that we really haven't heard a whole lot about. Um, it was linked in some other podcasts, possibly to the case, never officially. Klein's never been charged in connection with the Delphi murders, but uh, has been convicted of unrelated child exploitation and child pornography charges. The defense argues that uh, Walla's actions are motivated by personal curiosity rather than professional duty, which they believe was a violation of ethical obligations. I, I mean, I, if you're if you're helping somebody out, I would think you know you, you kind of want to understand what's going on in this case, what is going on around you, um, you know. Or or again, is that is that going a bit too far? And and should she have? You know, stuck more so just with the the patient uh, himself and, and working directly with him rather because it's not her job to to prosecute this case or to find other motives or whatever her job mm -hmm. was there to to help him. Yeah, yeah, it, it's I, I think we're in a big gray area when it comes to therapists and the internet. You know, there's been controversy about people who someone calls them for an appointment and they Google the person before they decide mm -hmm. to take them or not. Is that ethical? Technically, no, you're not yeah. really supposed to, you know, do background investigation on people who want to work with you. Does it happen? I'm sure it does. Yeah. Because as I say, therapists are human. They're curious. Um, the internet was there. She heard this name. She wanted to find out. You know, it's I, I, I we're always cautioned about be careful what we do on the internet, but particularly what we post on the internet. Sure. And it's, you know, hopefully she has a clinical supervisor in her role there. And, you know, this is being looked at and and everybody is given some kind of guidelines because probably within the institution, if they don't have guidelines, they need to have guidelines about this stuff. Just so things like this don't happen. Let me ask you about that with posting on the Internet uh, as a therapist. Is this something that we're seeing more of from a younger generation of, of therapists that are coming up because the social media and all that has always been a part of their lives. And it's just always kind of been, well, yeah, you post things online. Um, obviously there's certain things you can't or shouldn't. Um, and, and maybe an older generation that already knows that, and it wasn't kind of just part of the repertoire of work and, and life. Um, 
she, I, I'm looking at a picture of her right now, doesn't look very old. Um, I'm guessing, you know, younger um, from the generation where she had a lot of the social media. What, do you, what have you seen in that? You know, I don't see much of it. I, I have, uh, you know, probably a hundred friends I associate with on Facebook who are therapists out of all my other friends. Mm -hmm. And typically we don't go into work stuff yeah. on Facebook. It's more cat pictures and dog pictures <laughs> yes. and, you know, sometimes politics, but there are people who don't even go near that, you know? So it's... It's, I think, a gray area. Um, the ethical rules, they're trying to stay up to date with what's appropriate with ethics. Mm -hmm. And there are some ethics boards in certain places that don't even want therapists to have social media accounts mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. I think that's a bit too rigid, but I do think we have to be mindful about not posting things sure. that are going to, you know, betray too much about anybody. Yeah. We have to stay clear on the boundaries. Social media has been an issue with this trial earlier uh, in the case. Uh, even uh, one of the the investigators posted a murder scene photo, you know, accidentally. Uh, I mean, accidentally. it seems like there's a lot of of in sloppy work, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. that, that's been going on here. And a lot of things that have just been kind of, well, this is how we've been doing it. And now that there's a microscope on them, like everything is, is being everything. caught. It, it does make you wonder... What else in other cases has, right. has kind of gone to the wayside right. where social media, you know, really wasn't in, it looked at that uh, that heavily. But uh, now with everybody watching this, it's it's a big issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely a, a concern. And I, I think, you know, therapists typically do not want to get in trouble. Right. Nobody wants a complaint against them. Sure. So I think more often than not, therapists are being very careful about it. Mm -hmm. And and when we talk about the older generation, many of them are going along with, oh, I don't have Facebook. Sure. You know, yeah. I, I want to keep my private life private. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just don't go there. So it's it's definitely a gray zone. But yeah, in a case like this, where there has been so much that's weird, so many things that are questionable, it's just another unfortunate, unfortunate thing. It is. I, I would be really fascinated, not that I'll have an opportunity, but what were her treatment records like? You know, yeah. what, what did she identify as a diagnosis and what was she doing with yeah. him? You know, because there's been questions about the quality of, of you know, care that he's had. And, and that's important to yeah. know. That's going to be fast. It's just one more one more thing that they're going to have issue with on appeal. I, I've been saying that like he, I feel like he has not a get out of jail free card, but a get a new trial free card yeah. if convicted. I, I don't see any yeah. other way around it. There's only if he's free, then it's done. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, just another another thing. Uh, another thing for this case. Mm -hmm. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, add free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted.